And we'll see if Lilac can get his hands on that Maokai. Cassiopeia not going to be given over to Frozen. Yeah, of course, that big time Cassiopeia player. Now, Callista banned out. That is a you know, very priority ban in general, but especially against Oki, who has shown he can completely take over games with that champion. Yeah. Picking up four or five kills in the laning phase alone, it has been pretty damn impressive. So, uh, I, I, and there are a lot of bans here coming in, too. Do you want to get risk giving Duke Rumble? That's a major threat. That's true, too. Probably not too worried about. Lissandra, if you're I am, there's the Maokai. I think that's very smart. Yep, just don't even give it to them. And, you know, the question is, with the patch, with which, with patch 5.5 being out, is this maybe something that finally will benefit Watch a little bit? He'll get to utilize those tanky junglers maybe a little bit more. I don't know if it's really what they need, but it might help a bit. Yeah, you know, maybe. Uh, I'm not really sold on Watch. I don't think he has the best instincts about where and win to be places on the map. That's also a pretty major problem. I'd rather see I mean, Peanut, but. If if you're gonna go with a, a jungler that can really benefit off of tankiness, I have to say Bengi, because in my opinion, Bengi makes a lot smarter decisions, is better about vision control, generally speaking. Well, unfortunately, they can't use Bengi in this they, game, They Monty. can't. They have to pick between Watch and, <laughs> and uh, Peanut. I'd say give Peanut experience. He's 17 years old. Seriously, your, yeah. Your season. It's pretty much over at this point. Now, it will be the Sejuani first pick once again. Yep. Trend we saw start yesterday here. Yeah, the Korean team's really wanting to pick that Sejuani up now. Surprising that I am banned Zareth, considering Frozen's acumen on that champion. And yeah. yes, Tank has played it, and he's played it well, and he's gotten that pentakill. But even so, Frozen, I think, is the greater danger. By far. I mean, even Gank by Mom says he's the second best uh, Zareth in Korea, GBM being the first best, of course. <laughs> so hey, if you're second best, I mean, it's, it's, it's impossible to overtake GBM as a Zareth player, but if you can be second best, that's pretty good. So what are the first two picks for uh, I am going to be? You know, I almost want to see them just grab Scion for Lilac. Just give him that big tanky top laner. I think it's smart to take away the Thresh here for Tucson. That has Absolutely. been one of his go-to champions. We haven't seen it unbanned against IM in some time. We're taking and Rumble away. Pure also has played in three of his last five matches. And there's the Rumble actually for Lilac. I mean, okay. I've been so unimpressed with Lilac on casters this season. Like you said, he had that chance to take the Scion. Scion available, Scion a champion that we've seen banned against Lilac in the past. Yeah. It was a, a lot early on, and I hope Duke plays Scion now because Duke is also a very good Scion player, and it will be the Urgot lock-in actually instead of the Thresh. So, yeah, and which has been interesting because we've seen Urgot used as sort of a counter pick so far, but uh, we haven't seen it picked before the AD carry on the other side went down. Nar and Alistar are locked in, so they're trying to punish the Urgot here by making yeah. it so you don't want to swap anybody in on Najin's composition. And Urgot so far has a 100% win rate in, con in Korea, it must be mentioned. I've got a feeling that's about to change in this game. <laughs> we'll see. Are TF looking a bit rough. An interesting pick here for Frozen. Could go with the mid Cho'Gath too for that extra tankiness in the mid side. And I imagine this is going to be a setup for Jarvan eventually. Yeah, I really feel like TF just wouldn't find a lot of squishy targets with the team that Najin's putting together right now. So the Cho'Gath might be the way to go. But uh, who knows? With IM, that could be a support Cho'Gath and a mid Janna too. <laughs> it's possible. It is possible. That <laughs> scary, but but possible. You know, I think the Cho'Gath here, it's going to be a blind pick in the mid lane. But yeah, was the the high sustain due to Cho'Gath's passage? They're going Ooh. to lock in Nautilus jungle. Okay, yeah. So we've seen Nautilus as support, of course, plenty of times in other regions, especially NA. But we have not seen it in Korea in any capacity, and the first game that we will see it is presumably going to be in the jungle. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, a lot of junglers I know have been complaining about Nautilus's slow clear speed, but we have seen a lot of junglers in solo queue in Korea playing it. And Sejuani has, uh, I believe, fairly fast clear right now as well too, right? So, uh, yeah, relatively. Pretty, well, faster than uh, Nautilus yeah, anyway, yes, but yes. Yeah, it's an interesting choice. But IM is just filled with interesting choices. Maybe it's AD Janna. Give yourself that big, uh, big AD boost with the shield and just going for those autos. That's right. That'd be that'd be really sick. Yep. More attack speed, please. All right. I've it won could games be with it. Najin playing the TF again. Now we talked about their Karthus 
and how they really s flourish when they put pressure on wow. side lanes. Yeah. And we saw Goong try to play this in Najin's last game, and they lost horribly. So yeah. still, it's going to be an interesting pickup. You have the spell shield as well uh, on Sivir to try and make sure that Urgot can't grab her out. Otherwise, the front line's a pretty unappealing champions for Urgot to take into his own team. You'd have to preemptively uh, or preemptively spell shield to get out of the Urgot ult, though, because once it's on, it's yep. on. Yep. Can't see it really coming. Nope. So this is interesting, because if you remember a while ago, a few matches ago, Tank played Lissandra and just really did not seem to know when and where to engage. So putting him on uh, TF right now seems like a pretty bold move. See how well it works out. Looks like it might be a Zed in the mid lane now for IM. Yeah, a Zed counterpick into TF. Pretty classic. Uh, I guess could go with the Diana for that interruption onto TF during his channel. But you know, it, the Zed a little stronger, at least in the laning phase. Yeah. Maybe it could be a mid Urgot. Yep, I think so. Yeah, so mid Urgot will be the order yeah. of business now for IM. The issue is that Urgot isn't going to have very good wave clear. And so it's going to open up a lot of potential port attempts for TF as he pushes the minion wave in. So that's, that's the big true. problem I see. So Frozen's going to have to be really active about hitting those Acid Hunters. If he doesn't hit a bunch of Acid Hunters and poke tank down to the point where he can't TP anymore, that's going to be really problematic. Well, I think that's the idea behind uh, Frozen's Urgot pick here. Just get in there, do a lot of damage to TF, prevent the teleports that way if you can. Well. I'm excited to see our first jungle Nautilus game. Nautilus versus yeah. Sejuani. It's a brave new jungle. I know, right? 5.5 has really changed a lot of things in, in, in a very good way, I think. Yeah, it's it's mixed up the meta, that's for sure. But yeah. a lot of hard CC coming in from Najin. I mean, they have hard CC on four out of their five champions in this composition, as well as just having the speed boost from Sivir. So Najin. Really looking for that 5v5 with a port into the back line. They have good early game presence on the lanes. Maybe difficult for IM to even survive the laning phase right here. Lilac is going to have to be so careful. Yep. And so, a battle to uh, try to avoid those up and down matches after the season begins between Najin and IM. A lot on the line for these two teams. Nothing decided, but still, better safe than sorry. Let's get in game one, see who takes it. Here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Najee M versus I M. The fanatical, incredible Miracle fans in the house. So Doha, I didn't even know that either of these skins existed for oh, really? Nautilus or Sejuani. Well, this is, that's a brand new Nautilus one. I think the Sejuani one has been out for a while. That's a, a fan of Frozen there. And that's Frozen himself. Wow, apparently Battlecast Urgot is the only skin available for Urgot players in uh, on the yeah, Korean so tournament realm. It's very shameful they don't use Giant Enemy Crab God. I know, man. The if, best Urgot skin. If you're going to play Urgot, you really should use Giant Enemy Crab God. It's true. Well, Ward's going down. Pretty uh, passive start for both sides initially. Yep, that's, uh, I forget the name of that skin exactly. But there's like two good armor looking ones and then two like kind of sinister armor looking ones. I see. Yeah. You know what I like about League of Legends? What do you like about League of Legends, Monte the Cristo? The gameplay, not the silly skins. You know what I like about League of Legends? <laughs> Both. <laughs> I'm inclusive. You know, we haven't really talked about it uh, at all much yet, but yeah, support Alistar, something we haven't seen in a while. I think it Long makes while. sense with what I am is trying to do right here. And we have seen that increasingly large number of tanks. And Incredible Miracle in the late game is going to have some problems dealing damage to Najin with how big this tank line is right here. Of course, Corky is going to start falling off in that late game. And we make Incredible Miracle. Do we? We can do it together. The crowd trying to read that one. 
Those are some complicated words, though. Incredible. Well, actually, that's the name of the team. They should know that. <laughs> no response at all from the crowd with that sign there. They were like, are we making it? But, uh, they have to wait and see, Dylan. I guess. Maybe they're just, it's all, the miracle has already been made, and they're if just you, in shock. They're in astonishment right now. You have to clap your hands and think real hard. And uh, I'm happy. I'm something. Oh, I didn't see the rest of it. I should have started reading that sooner. Stare deeply into the camera and do strange things with your mouth. No, your please mouth don't do that. Slightly <laughs> agape in, in wonder of, of the incredible miracle. It's happening, Doha. <laughs> the incredible miracle's beginning. Can you feel it? There's Tank. Got a pentacle. Decided to change his name to something that didn't relate to the mid lane at all, unless you're GE Tigers. Maybe he's just a Panzer enthusiast. Maybe he should have played Chilgath. <laughs> yeah. This isn't World of Tanks, man. Wrong game. Well, maybe we are going into World of Tanks, actually, with this meta. <laughs> Pretty sure it is World yeah, of Tanks I think, now. I think we are casting World of Tanks at this point, yeah. Once again, I should say. <laughs> oh, hooray, it's Nar. Well, that was very loud. I really don't understand why they had to revoice Nara for Korea. That doesn't make any sense. He doesn't even say anything in English. I don't think he does either, yeah. Huh. That's one of the least sensical revoiceovers. Yeah, that is a bit odd. What if the champions don't say things? Uh, Rek'Sai? Yep, that's true. I'm pretty sure they didn't revoice Rek'Sai, though. No. No, I don't think they did. I suppose you didn't really need to revoice Lissandra all that much, just a couple lines here and there, but boy, did they go crazy with <laughs> Lissandra in Korea. They're like, let's just make her sound violently ill every time she does anything. Well, I'm very curious to see how this works out because Incredible Miracle does have to be very careful about what's going on in this mid lane. You can there see Tank actually opting uh, for, ooh, what's he gonna lock in? He decided not to go boots in this matchup, which means it's going to be harder to dodge those corrosive charges. Yeah, counting on the flask to be able to keep him sustained in the lane. I really don't know if this is the best answer to Twisted Fate or not, but Frozen has been really accurate with those skill shots so far. Yeah, wow, he's chunked tank out quite nicely. Going to use up the charges on that flask pretty quick. Frozen with biscuits. Or God doesn't use uh, simple potions. He requires biscuits. And here we go. Maybe coming in for a dive right as this wave hits the oh, turret. Oh, man. The teleport coming in for Lilac. Really good timing. For Classic Lilac. catch. 4v1. Lilac in a lot of trouble. There's the exhaust. I don't even think they needed it. First blood goes to Okiu. And, yep, that's one that people have been catching Lilac with all season <laughs> long. Well, I mean... Very predictable port <laughs> was, right there. We saw. He does it like almost every game. We saw it, no sign really of Ares or Tucson there to join with the wave. So there was pretty predictable wave being set up. You have to be yep. there in time, otherwise you can get punished in that 4v1 dive. Najin finds that opportunity and gives Oku the first blood, which is something that sometimes can just straight up lose you the game with how good Oku is. Yeah, if you're going to give anyone first blood on this team, Oku is probably not the one you want to do that to with. Four. Four. How are your prepositions going today, Doug? Just cycling through, you know. <laughs> it's uh, inspired by TF, you know. He can cycle through his card. I will cycle through my prepositions. <laughs> so Here we ooh, go. Gank attempt. All right. Sichuani and Alistar coming in, and there's Ares to try to prevent this, and it looks like he will. For now. Ares just making his presence known in that mid lane. That's going to cause Tucson to be a little bit more aggressive with OQ down on the bottom side, but yep. good roaming so far by the Salister. Well, you can get plenty of nice poke in if you shield yourself on uh, Janna and have that Spell Thief's Edge. That's some serious poke. So Nar actually going to get a big wave of experience in the top side. A bit uncontested up there, so. I like already. Well, he hasn't started falling behind yet, but. No, I mean, he had the teleport, yes. so. Yeah. And he got, even though he missed that big wave right there, it's not going to be the end of the world for him. He will be behind at XP, thanks to Duke being in that solo lane. Now, Oku's going to have a pretty easy time farming this, too. Already with a nice little CS lead. TF going back 
for a quick codex right there and a refill on the pot as well as the boots. So yeah. I'm I'm very interested in how this mid lane is going to play out. I'm I'm happy that uh, Najin has decided to start playing TF in addition to their Karthus. Just, well, just because we know where their strengths are and Najin seems to understand that as well. So I like what we're seeing. Well, like you said too, Tank is a newer player. We need to see some more variation from his picks and going for the TF is a pretty big deviation from what we've seen so far. So this will be a good opportunity to show us that he's got a, a deeper champion pool than he initially looked like he might have. Yeah, it also shows, it will show how much forethought he has in communication with his team because right. it's one thing to play Karthus and just press R in order to help the side lanes. It's another one to really set it up for yourself, make sure you have the wave pressure in order to do it properly. Yeah. And actually make that play in the end. And Tank is level six right now. And he's got that wave pushed up. So he's holding back right there. Making sure that he does have at least an opportunity. Duke, Adnar, not playing too aggressively up in the top lane. Those first couple of TF ports too are pretty vital in terms of setting up a successful mid game. If you don't get anything out of them, it becomes a little bit tough. Well, yeah, he uh, he really is going to need to set up team fights as well by getting into the back line onto Corky. I mean, Rajin has that big threat, but they rely on, I mean, they've got a lot of different ways they, they could engage, I suppose, but just taking that Corky out of the fight early makes sure that there's nobody on Incredible Miracle that will really be able to deal a lot of damage in the late game in a team fight. I think it's gonna get a little bit poked here by Frozen, but Najin just has so much CC that they can layer effectively too. A lot of really nice AOE if you combine the Sejuani ult and then Alistar comes in and knocks everybody up and then Nar gets in and throws yeah. everybody against the wall. I really like Najin's composition. I think yeah. they did a great job. Incredible Miracle has a lot of crowd control as well, but again, I'm just concerned about them in the late game actually being able to have enough damage to deal with this massive front line that Najin's going to be throwing at them. I think as long as Najin can keep OQ alive, he's going to be the one outputting far more damage than this Corky in, a, in the team fight once the autos start rolling in. So, yeah, I am. Let's see how much punch they could put down some of these earlier dragon fights where they will have the advantage with the Rumble and the Corky in the mid game. Yep. Well, watch going for that Stalker's Blade, I believe. And. Areas with the Trailblazer, so pretty normal stuff. Although, are you a little bit surprised to see the Stalker's Blade from Watch with all the slows and CCs you already get on Sejuani? Yeah, I am I am a bit surprised. Uh, yeah. It does kind of slow down its clear a little bit. A little bit. I mean, it's not the biggest deal in the world, and maybe that will actually be the difference in terms of a gank, whereas you know, Sejuani has enough AoE that she can clear pretty quickly, even without a Trailblazer. So. That's true. He did go for a fast bomby Cinder as well, so... He'll be able to kind of make up for it by having a little bit more just passive AoE. Yeah, no Sightstone, but Sightstone on Ares very quickly right here. And one thing statistically about Ares since he's been playing, he has been putting down a lot more wards than most other junglers. So he's definitely there in terms oh, of the vision game. Game coming in. There's a gold card on the Lilac. Nice CC from Watch as well. That is what Najin needs to do. Really, really well done. Layering that CC. Easy kill for Tank. And uh, that was just a good recall or a bad recall timing from Frozen right there. Lilac pressed up a little bit far in the lane when Frozen didn't have any presence in mid, so it was basically a free port right there from Tank. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, with Watch there to follow up with the Sejuani ult, it was a pretty easy one to execute. So that was a good timing taken advantage of by Najin, and you now, know the now they've got a couple different lanes rolling at the moment. The other side of that as well too is, or I should say what you can add on to that is that because of Frozen kind of being a little bit out of position, it didn't even give IM a chance to respond with a dragon like we see often done when there's a gank yeah. in the top lane. That's a very good point. So there's nothing they can do as a result of that kill. Yep. And you have to be really careful. You need to know that that's what Tank's plan is going to be. So the other lanes have to play safely under the circumstances that mm -hmm. Frozen can't be there to try and stop Tank from backing or put pressure on the mid lane. Yep, and we're seeing what we thought we would see too, which is where Lilac just gets picked on, you know, up in the top lane. There's just really nobody ever around to defend him. It's, I feel bad for Lilac this season because he hasn't had the greatest individual play. He's died a lot 1v1, but 
when he's not dying 1v1, he's getting mercilessly ganked by the I other team. At a certain point, though, if he's going to die 1v1, that has to be on him. Well, that part of it certainly is. So uh, it may mean that people are less likely to help him just because of how unlikely it is that he wins his lane these days. So Jungler may decide that it's a better use of his time to try and protect Frozen or Sonstar, somebody who is more capable of carrying the game. Well, he usually is. Frozen managed to push up that mid lane for the moment. Watch is going to get spotted by this ward as he goes through the jungle. So, no big mystery. Yeah, and what that death did do, though, was allow IM to get some very nice deep wards into the bottom side jungle. Oh, that's true. Of Najin. And IM has had good vision over and over and over again throughout the season. One of the things that IM is good at is getting vision down, but they just don't have the players to take advantage of it, unfortunately. Yeah. But they do frequently know exactly where the enemy jungler is, as they do in this circumstance. They'll be able to take a dragon, most likely as a result. Yep. Everybody except for Lilac there to try to take that. Now, Duke does have teleport available, whereas Lilac doesn't. But it looks like the dragon's not going to be contested by Najin, so I am just going to grab that one. A little bit more damage onto this top lane turret now via Duke. Wow, Frozen's got a nice little CS lead up in uh, the mid lane as well. I mean, yeah, Tank's been roaming just a little bit, but Frozen's done a good job of kind of pushing him out. Well, look at the CS lead that we see opening up between Duke and Lilac right That's now, insane. too. And remember that it was pretty even in the lane swap, but the Gnar Rumble matchup really starts to go in favor of Gnar once Gnar gets that first offensive item, in this case the Hex Drinker, and right. it's been working really well. Tucson with a bit of a roam right here. They're trying to make a play onto the mid lane tower and trade for the bottom one, and they're yep. probably going to get it. Yeah, looks like they will unless Najin comes in right now. Gold card not loaded up for Tank. He's going to go ahead and wait for that. You know, it's a red card, so he can clear a bit. Yeah, that's what he's going to have to go with. Wow, they actually saved that mid lane turret, so watch Coming in just in the nick of the time and Pure making a move to the mid lane after sieging down that outer turret. And this is, I mean, I am, they're losing in a part of the game. They're gonna have a really hard time dealing with their corky rumble power spike well, in the next just... five, 10 minutes with this kind of deficit already built up for them. Well, yeah, that power spike is just gonna come way too late. It's gonna be more of like a power bump. Especially with Gnar. Oh, Lilac drops Equalizer, but here comes Tank as well. Gold card onto Rumble and Watch in there to just add a little bit of moral support as Tank picks up his second kill with his second ultimate use. And Najin still uh, rolling very smoothly through this game so far. Well, they have pink wards in the appropriate locations to make sure that TF can get an uninterrupted port off under these circumstances. and. Pure doing a little bit of lane coverage right here, but there's not enough wave clear to actually punish TF for porting. And that's one of the things about this mid Urgot is you just don't have as much wave control as a lot of other mid laners. So you are kind of at the mercy. And that's the thing I was worried about in this matchup is how many opportunities it would open up for Tank to actually port right here. And yeah. it's been a couple already. Well, when you look at the jungler over on IM side, Ares, I mean, yeah, we talked about how their vision has been pretty good, but Ares now picking up that Cinder Hulk a little bit late, but he just hasn't seemed to have been around really when any of the action has been going on. I mean, he actually did protect Frozen from that gank early on, and it was also his warding and then his presence which got them the dragon. So he's playing around objectives well, hmm. and he's at least put it, setting himself up for a counter gank. He should have been at that bottom turret or around it when they did have that 4v1 dive, though. That's a mistake. But otherwise, I think he's been pretty much doing the right thing. Hmm. Can't turn around a 3v1 in the top lane very easily if Frozen is back at base. It's pretty tough. He was also there to put a lot of this damage down on the mid lane. Wow, too. you're getting they're really gonna get, They're going to get the mid now as a result of it too. So yep. I think Ares has been putting pressure down this game on objectives pretty nicely. But I think that the lack of wave control as well as Lilac pushing out at dangerous times has meant that Najin has found those openings. Yeah, it seems that way so far. Duke coming back up with a few more items. And so Najin just kind of taking a little bit of a breather for now. Oh, OQ is not though. 1v1 onto Sonstar. Sonstar 
doing some damage himself too. Oh, big phosphorus bomb. Can Oku actually dodge enough oh, rockets? Wow. There's the flash. There's the summoner heal. Pier comes in and sets it up. And Oku finishes it off. Gets that kill there. Teleport coming down though. Could be in trouble. Lilac drops the equalizer immediately. Gets a nice slow onto Oku. But here comes a gate of destiny. TF coming in. Gold card onto Tucson. Right after that all goes off. They force the flash. Frozen on his way out as well too. Oh. Turning to poke. And look at that engage from Najin. That is hard, hard, hard engage. Such a mistake wow. for IM to try and turn that around. No there kidding. were two ports from Najin coming in, both TF and Dukes, uh, compared to just one from Lilac, and they had already lost their AD carry. The Equalizer doing nowhere near enough damage in order to snipe out OQ in the back line. But starting with that awesome micro we saw from OQ as he was just standing basically on top of Corky's models to make that model, to make that rocket as difficult as possible to hit, as well as absorbing one with his spell shield, and then forcing two summoners to be used by Sonstar just to escape. Really impressive series of plays, but Najin all over this game. Yeah, yeah this one's looking pretty one-sided so far. A 5,000 gold lead at just 16 minutes into the game, 6-0 and for kills. Tank's been really good this game. He's been yeah, finding he the right timings. He's been porting into the right locations and coordinating very nicely with his team. And to watch his credit as well. He's been setting up those plays with Tank. The communication seems good in order to uh, start snowballing this top side especially. I mean, Duke is terrifying already. Yep, 104, plenty of items. Dragon up in about 45 seconds now. And we'll see if Najin can take that one and even up the dragon count one to one. Yeah, and watch has always been there. I really the like end when Najin plays like this, when they play this style where everybody is about supporting top and bot, and they get Duke a big advantage, and they get OQ a big advantage, and then they're able to play aggressively afterwards. This has been by far their most successful style this season, just like KT's has been those more all-in uh, CC heavy engage compositions. This is uh, where Najin really shines. Oh, Duke just actually doing a ton of damage to Lilac under the turret. There's Equalizer going down. Duke goes Mega Narg. Does he get the ult? He does! And there's a 1v1 in the top lane. How many times have we seen Duke do that to Lilac this season? It was not pretty the last time they met. And he other top like, laners, too. I mean, Duke has yep. by far the most solo kills out of anybody in this league. Yeah, and he has most of those against Lilac, too. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is true. I am going to try to go ahead and take this dragon, but no top laner for the moment. No teleport on either side, so Duke's not going to be joining it anytime soon. Najin, though, they got the turret in top, and they're not really too compelled to fight this. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, looks like they might just for fun here. Ares coming in, there's a Siveralt getting a little bit more mobility, trying to zone out. Can they get the dragon? No, they can't. Ares manages to help us pick that one up. Sejuaniel comes in, they're going to take down the jungler, and now Najin thinking about chasing but deciding not to. They got a kill. Dragon doesn't really matter a whole lot. They got the top lane turret, extending that gold lead. Najin's still feeling very comfortable in this game. Uh, yeah. At this early phase of the game, the fact that they can take a tower instead of the dragon and just extend that gold lead, they're going to be confident with this kind of advantage just to take all remaining dragons anyway once that yeah. TP's back up. So I think the pressure here does serve them well. OQ just continues to farm up. I mean, look at Duke already. He's 70 CS in the lead at that's 19 terrifying. minutes into this game. It's terrifying. That's that's insane. You know, Lilac has been on Incredible Miracle for a very long time, but I think it's time to think about some changes in the top lane. Oh, oh and right. OQ. Blue buff for OQ. You know, whatever. Yeah. A little bit of blue steel there. He did that blind. He couldn't see in that brush. Yeah. Well, insult to injury at this point, you know. <laughs> when it rains, it pours, right? Well, he's pretty surprised he got that. Yeah. I'd be pretty happy. Looks like Randuin's getting close to done for Duke. That's going to give him a bit more tankiness, help him out there. So, Corky finally hitting that power spike with his Trinity Force and Sork Shoes, but I am already in a position where they're not, they're just not going to be sieging anytime soon. Nope. 7,000 gold deficit. Uh, they've only lost two towers, and kind of amazingly at this point, considering how deep these waves have been pushed and top and bot. Well, it's not the greatest uh, siege, I guess, for Najin, but man, they've got a crazy team fight. 
Yeah, well, they could just dive, is the thing. They could yeah. just absolutely just dive with Alistair Ultimate. Shouldn't be too much of an issue for them. And they haven't gotten the mid lane down just because tanks been porting into side lanes, so there just hasn't been that much damage coming in. Well, Najin just kind of camping out by the dragon area right now. Ooh, that was close. So I hope we see Tank go for that Lich Bane next. Already two core items completed for him, so he's going to be feeling really good about his situation. Easily able to engage onto the Sonstar in the back line at this point. Oh, yeah. Man, and Aries just he has been having a hard time for a while now. Duke's just taking red buffs. Watch there as well. Yep. Frozen comes in. Looks like they might just have to give that one up. Yep. Not a big problem there. They can always get it back in a team fight later, right? Altusen coming in. Doesn't get the knockup onto Pure. I am able to protect their mid turret for now, though. If you're I am, you've just had the second half of this oh boy. season. Oh boy. Tank's like, all right, I want a piece of this, too. Flashes, though. There's a gold card, and there's another kill for Tank. That's his third on the Lilac this game. Oh boy, he's 5 0 1. Another assist for Duke, and Lilac 0 6 0. It's I mean, the, he's the just, agony of the Lilac, man. At, at this point, he's just getting picked on, right? There's nothing yep. he can do anymore. He wasn't playing particularly dangerously in that situation, even. He was trying to farm right next to his tier two, but he's so weak. Yeah. And he's, so far behind. He's three levels behind Duke. It's a 4v5 right now. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Lilac has a. But that's what you do. You know Lilac's weak. You're going to go ahead and target him and make it so he can't do anything at all in these games. Tons of wards set up for Najin, so they have free reign over that bottom side of the map pretty much. We'll see how long it takes Duke to hit that 100 CS difference across the flame horizon, but it's probably going to be pretty soon. Yeah, he's up to about 80 right now, so not too far off. The flame horizon is like the, the event horizon, only with a lot more makeup. <laughs> and awkward pro poses. Yes, that's true, yeah. Occasional Ezreal cosplay. because why not? Minute 30 until Dragon. And this is where Najin's like, all right, we're, we're taking this one from here on out, guys. We'll handle the Dragons. <laughs> There's a new Dragon Slayer in town. That's right. We don't need your services anymore, I am. There's a new Dovakin. <laughs> oh. And just pushing I am away again, just giving themselves more of a chance to take control of the Dragon area. Oh, there's a ward. I hate it when you sweep and the ward's like almost dead and you're like, ah, oh, man. <laughs> Would have been gone. Or when you get two hits on it and then it expires and you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Don't get that sweet, sweet gold. Nope. Well, no happen. actually Oracle's lens is on Dinajin yet. Meanwhile, two upgraded red trinkets on IM. So I think Najin a little bit lackadaisical in that regard. They. They want to close this properly. They have every chance to make picks if, as long as they can maintain vision control. Yeah, I mean, now the question is, you know, how cleanly can Najin close this one out? And upgrading your trinkets is probably a good idea if you want to do it smoothly. Well, we know that Najin doesn't like to close out games very smoothly. Oh, that's for sure, yeah. At some point, OQ is going to run into a tower and die. Like, Najin manages to find, it, uh, find a way to make it a 50-minute game All most right, times. Like oh, Duke. Duke, Duke, Duke. Another kill. It's so easy. Oh, poor Lilac. Duke's getting knocked up. He's Meganar now taking some turret hits, though. The Revenge comes in position reverser to uh, secure the kill. And Duke gets a nice ult, but doesn't matter. He'll finally go down. Yeah, Three, one and with five. four people topside, it's going to be a dragon. So yep. trade one for one. Get the dragon. Duke doesn't even bother popping his flash right there. He doesn't even care if he dies at this point as long as they can continue taking objectives, and they're yeah. going to move right into this Tier 2 turret, take the blue as well. So absolutely, perfectly okay for Duke to die in the top side, even though it was the shutdown gold that they got. Yep. Oh, well, he's four CS away from the Flame Horizon. Are you excited, Doa? I'm so excited. Somewhere, like, Flame is going to have this sort of, like, spider sense that starts to tingle, you know? It seemed like, what? So I felt a disturbance in the top lane. <laughs> As if someone was 100 CS behind and was suddenly silenced. 
Uh, it hasn't oh, been a very sudden silencing for Lilac. It has been a repeated, it's long and drawn and out, huh? brutal silencing. The agony of the that Lilac. Continues. We've reached that point, haven't we? I, I mean, and honestly, at this point, depends how these last matches go, but I think Lilac is definitely the front runner for the Long Panda Memorial Trophy at this point. I, I really thought Kuve had it uh, had it locked down, but, but Lilac I, is a challenger. Yeah, he really has made a, a, a case for it in the second half of this season. It's been a stunning comeback. I'm impressed. <laughs> yep. Definitely the front runner for the, for the Long Panda Award this season. It's true. All right, I am. Looking for picks. What else can they do? Well, there's a Void Staff for Lilac, so he's got a little bit more magic penetration. There we go, slow on to Duke. There's some knockups. Duke comes in, waiting for it. Frozen there to help out. It's a 4v1. He is. he is so tanky, man. Meanwhile, the bottom lane not looking too good for IM. Duke trying to get away, can't quite do it. Gate of Destiny comes down as they're gonna just blow up Sonstar and take this bottom tier two. They're gonna do the Baron. Oh my. Wow, why I, not, I admire, why not? I admire IM's balls. You know, that minion may have gave it away though. Oh, it did, totally. Yep. It's a minion that chased them all they're the way down. They're gonna try and go for inhibitor as a trade, which no, is a much like, better right. trade. Oh yeah, I don't think they're worried about it really at all. They're like, yeah, sure. We'll take an inhibitor for that I, That's Baron. honestly a good call from IM. Uh, yeah, it's Why the best not? call they can make right Why now. Why not? That's actually a way to stay in this game. OQ is going to run around through a bunch of turrets and push <laughs> the mid lane with his ghost blade in the meantime. Yep. See if they can get another tier two for it. But uh, with those, those recalls. So in the end for that, it was Duke in trade for Sonstar, two towers and an inhibitor, Duke and a Baron. But over the long haul in this game, that Baron's not going to mean a lot for Najin because they can, or for IM, because they can still get engaged on very easily by Najin. Right. And so, but at least they got something. When you have to play from behind, it's nice to see a team that at least takes some risks. And I think that by getting that Baron, they did about as much as they could, considering this insane deficit they already have. Yeah. Wow. Watch is uh, international man of mystery now. He's 007 this game. <laughs> He's become Watch, James Watch. Did you see the uh, Spectre trailer that came out today? I did. It looks good. I'm really excited. Yeah. We've had a we've had a pretty good run for recent James Bond movies, haven't we? Uh, Quantum of Solace was, eh, but Skyfall and... That's a uh, pretty good. Oh, here we go. And that's a pretty good engage by Najin. Knock up on a Tucson, and that's going to be a blown up. Janna really quickly throws in trouble as well, gets exhausted. And the mid laner coming in with that gate of destiny. Sansar trying to do damage from the outside. Man, watch just all over people. That's a double kill for OQ as he just kind of dances his way around that fight. Make it a triple kill and Duke trying to just go 1v1 against the AD carry. But why not? <laughs> why not when you are uh, Meganar, even if you're not Meganar? A perfect case, you know. Yep. For Najin right there. Tank really baited out a lot of those abilities nicely. Held on to his Zonia's Hourglass for a long time. And Ares is maxing E this game. You know, that is. The cooldown reduction on that E, that is very useful to get early, but it's not dealing enough damage to tank, and wow. tank able to kite that one out by Second inhibitor, 20 his Zonias and his summoners, so. Jeez. Well, those uh, blocks are gonna spell pond, I think, <laughs> if you zoom in. Ownt. 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 LOL. Well, that's about it for I am this game. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, honestly, in the second half of this season, Samsung has been the better team between these two. Yeah. They even won the head-to-head. -head. Yep, and they did. That was uh, their only win so far this season was against Incredible Miracle. And I think it's also, you know, pretty definitive that that also puts Kuve ahead of uh, or behind Lilac in the Long Panda Award <laughs> standings right now. Maybe they could finish stronger, but... Maybe, maybe, but I doubt it. I mean, the, the thing is, is you do have to feel sympathetic for IM because they did have what looked like a good thing going, you know, yes. with Wisdom and Tucson. Things seem to be really coming together. They beat Janair with that combo. Yeah, exactly. So it's sad to see, uh, you know, the team kind of lose the synergy that they had spent a lot of time building like this. Yeah, it's a bummer for sure. So, you know, IM not a, not a good team right now, but not entirely their fault too, I think. See what happens in the offseason, though. Najin just 
Oh, they're TPing into the base. Yep, that's right. Tank comes in with the Gate of Destiny. He's just gonna push some waves back, allow those super minions to get farther in. And it's just gonna be a pretty methodical cleanup. Oh, alt on to Tank, all right. They're gonna try to follow that up. Doesn't get knocked up though. Loads up another card, waiting for it. It's gonna be Duke in the base. He has Meganar. Actually, Ares is gonna go in onto him. Gets stunned. Najin doesn't care though. They're going after turrets at this point. Super minions still continuing into the base. There goes the inhibitor. And there's oh. a huge ult from Duke. Oh man, and a big Sejuani ult as well. And I am just melts. That is what this team does, guys. Ares makes it out. Oh, oh. He's like, nope. That was a five-man gnarl right there. And that was like a four or five-man uh, Sejuani ult right oh afterwards. Oh, my. Brutal, brutal beatdown. I hope there weren't any children in the room if you're watching <laughs> that at home because they are going to be scarred for life if they saw that team fight. Wow, really great game from Najin, right? And this is a team that we look at on paper and we're like, wow, these guys should be really, really good. I know, right? And they delivered that game. And Tank also just continue to find those opportunities to make plays, to have good TF faults. Oh man, and Lilac just, oh, what a, you know, it just goes from bad to worse for these guys. Yeah, it's a bummer, but uh, I mean, uh, Lilac has been repeatedly targeted as the weaker member of this team, and. Yeah, rightly so, unfortunately for him. Oh my, oh jeez, I'm watching this replay <laughs> again. It was a five-man Arlt into a four-man Sejuani ultimate. Really yeah. good team fighting from Najin to set that one up. Flash used by wow. Duke. Well, that was brutal. A victory. For